All right, what's up, y'all? It's like a fan here. As you can see by the title of today's video, we have the number one stretch big in NBA 2K25. So for those who have followed my channel, my boy Tonic or Joey, stuff like that, that's the type of build you're looking at right here. So with 611, as you just saw right there, Shifty Shooter is a badge that's unlockable. If you go any taller than that, it's not. So that's for hitting shots off the dribble, stuff like that. As you can see, we still have like enough primity for the Bronze Challenger. We actually have speed with ball high enough for lightning launch as well. Pass act still decent, like plenty good for throwing outlets and stuff like that. If you want to go a little bit lower on pass act, you definitely could consider doing that as well. But as you can see, combine the post control with the mid range on this build, we have legend post fade phenom still at a 94 mid range to even just create with in general in that area. The ball handle and speed with ball being good enough to still create on its own as well. The 80 defensive rebound and the 84 block to still at least hold your own with bigs. Now, I will recommend to you guys when you make a build like this. I think what you want to pair it with is someone along the lines of what I do, which is like an undersized inside big man or an undersized just big in general who can definitely just deal with the bigs a little bit more on the other team. So for instance, you know, coming out there with like a 94 defensive rebound, 6'8 or something like that. I think that would be perfect to pair that with this build right here. So with this one, you want to be a little bit more of like a corner spot up that is still very like centered in terms of uh, just catching the ball and then going to work with like the mid range fades, the creating on, on your own from the three point line or to go into the post up with, like we said, the legend post fade phenom. As you can see, this is not a powerhouse like strength build or anything like that. We don't have post powerhouse any higher than bronze. Unpluckable is going to silver off our post control. So that's pretty cool as well. You could go even higher, but just so y'all know, I'm pretty sure the gold unpluckable is 96 post controls and it gets expensive just so you know. So all that is tough. We didn't even talk about the close shot being high. Let me let me see if we got a, a little bit of like scrolling over that. So as you can see, we have like hook specialist on gold even with this. Now the reason that's the case is it gets tethered to your mid range super hard. So this is actually just naturally happening. You just have a high close shot just by default. So when you have a post score in this game that has the outside like a uh, kind of centered game to it, it's gonna naturally just get the inside centered game to it as well because it's just gonna get the close shot. And that does lead to you being able to do a whole lot more hooks and stuff like that, babying smaller matchups. I think it's gonna be a fun year for people like Tonic and Joey for sure. So if you can get away with a build like this where it only has like 74 vert, it's only got 73 strength, it's got, you know, 80 defensive rebound, but it's still a decent shot blocker and a decent interior defender, obviously. So that included, even though it's a little bit weaker on the rebound, if you have someone on your team, because thankfully rebounding is a very team oriented aspect of the game, you can definitely get away with that in my opinion. So if you guys watched all the videos to this point, I'm guessing you're wondering why can we get 75 ball handle on this build, but then like the, the 611 pure inside that you did only had 70 as a max. So that's obviously because of the wingspan, you know, 611 wingspan, minimum wing on the 611 here. So. It, it would be really tough, you know, like it's going to be hard for you to play like a big man, but that block rating should help. The 80 defensive rebound is still good enough for silver rebound chaser. I actually probably haven't scrolled over that as much as I probably should have to this point, because I'm guessing a lot of you guys aren't really under the impression that that's actually going to be the rating that gets tied into that. The strength is high enough to still sustain having silver box out beast. So yeah, it's not perfect, but it, I think you're at an okay level. I mean, you have silver defensive badges, silver rebounding badges. It's like an okay, acceptable thing. I think this would be a great build for 2v2 and 3v3 as well, like between the park and stuff like that. Granted, it's a lot more of an offensive centered build, but even still, you're at 79 speed at 611. That is still pretty fast. I mean, the 71 prim is only good enough for bronze challenger. We debatably, if you wanted to, I think you could. Let me scroll over the prim real quick. So just so you guys know, uh, Immovable Enforcer on Silver is 72 Prim. I'm not exactly sure in retrospect if the, if the strength is high enough to get that or not, but I think it might be. I'm not sure entirely, but that's just so you guys know. I'm guessing it's not high enough because I definitely would have like number crunched that to, to just try and get 72 Prim if that was attainable. So the strength, if you wanted to go a little bit higher on it to be able to afford that, you probably could get Immovable and it would help your perimeter defense, obviously a little bit with, you know, like walling up uh, on ball and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, again, just to kind of uh, recollect all our thoughts here, again, you still have like decent defensive badges. Uh, the, the ball handling and, and the fact that you're 6'11 itself it allows you that shifty shooter and stuff like that. And uh, the lightning launch on bronze as well with that 60 HP of ball. 70 might be important for dribble style. So we'll have to stay tuned for that because if it is super important, maybe a 6'10 is in the play instead of a 6'11. But I just want y'all to see this too. Like I, I probably made another video on this separately, but let me just pull it up real quick. So in this video, I have speed to height ratios for all all uh, heights and stuff like that. So for instance, you know, I'm, I'm scrolling through here on every height and just looking. So let's just start from the beginning. So like a 6'8", for instance, we're gonna use the benchmark of 83 strength 
for every one of these. So it's a max wingspan, and then we go as far down in the weight as we can until we get 83 strength. So in this case, as you can see, you know, with 83, at six foot nine, it's 83 speed. So I'm using that as the benchmark. So then we keep on going forward to that, right? Like, so for instance, we go to 610, put our put our weight down until we're 83 strength. And as you can see, that's now 78 speed. So I'm just comparing between all these and stuff, right? So again, that's 78 speed for a 610. Now you fast forward to the 611. As you can see, that's 76. So between the 610 to 611, you're gaining like literally two speed. I mean, and granted, agility is still something to factor into that as well. You know, perimeter defense could obviously be something to look at on top of that, steel, all that. But I just want to use speed as the main benchmark of comparison. So uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't think 610s are very good, like logistically speaking. Uh, as you can see, the footers, they have 72 speed. So you do drop off at least a little bit right there between the 611 to seven foot. And then the big hit, right here that you're gonna see like so seven ones they're at least decent and there are some very good stretch bigs at seven one but they're a little bit more like you know not meant to be a stretch stretch like we got 85 plus three pointer and 94 mid range on this 611 right here this is more meant to be a center build that can shoot the ball but not like a true on stretch big but check this out so that was 67 speed right <laughs> look at the seven two in the same circumstance this is insane it's the biggest drop off ever i think seven twos are gonna be the most useless height in the game in my opinion I think you should just go 7-1 as far as the max height for a build. I guess 7-3 if you're on some insane post-score nonsense that just doesn't care about speed or primity at all. But anyway, this 7-2 loses a lot, a lot of speed and agility compared to 7-1. So long story short, I think the, the height that you should work between as a stretch big would be somewhere between 6-10, maybe even 6-9 if you want really good jump shots and stuff like that if the wings are way better than the bigs in this year's game. But I would say somewhere between the 610 if it really requires that in terms of the ball handling stuff that you want or the speed with ball dribble style or like I showed in today's video the 611 that looks really good on paper as long as it can still you know dribble the ball decent with the dribble styles it's given seven foot seven one if you want to be like big big but still be able to shoot but yeah besides that i think that's about the majority of the video i want to show you guys let me just pull back the build real quick so yeah i mean i would like to think this is something that tonic probably will just respec a couple attributes here and there for his own liking but man i mean i would think he, this would be an out the gate build for him like that he would love to play on right away now for pro-am i don't assume this is something we would run i think the rebounding is just too low to be you know respectable in terms of what we would want out of it i, I will say though offensively this is a very big threat now I don't know what our lineup's looking like yet. I, I kind of want to play with Bonnie and Apollo again at like the two and the three. So uh, I apologize for the, those of you who are very new to the channel here that aren't familiar with these names like Tonic and Bonnie and Apollo and Joey and stuff like that. But those are all my guys that I play the game with. And just to dumb it down for you, uh, Tonic and Joey are both post scorers. I would love builds like this. Now, if one of them made a seven one that was way, way more centered around rebounding and like being a true comp big that's there for like boards, rotate, stuff like that. And then one of them made this build right here. I could make my 6'8 undersized big and play back in with it. And then we could also play with a point guard and shooting guard <laughs> at 5'9 that come out there and guard the hashes. And I know it sounds crazy if you haven't seen those videos yet, but dude, those 5'9s are looking legit in terms of playing like on ball hash key. I, it sounds crazy. Just hear me out, man. The extra attributes they get is insane. So on some true 2-3 style defense, pretty much, but with rotate ability to it, like imagine Tonic could come out here and be a more offensive version of a build like this. And then Joey could be on a 7-1 or something like that. And then we could come out with like Bonnie and AK on double six nines or something too, or five nines, I mean to say at the guard spots. And then, yeah, I could actually fit in as an undersized big because you're playing with two builds like this in double corners. That would be insane. So that's my vision pretty much for what we could do. But I don't know if everybody's on board with that. I'm not sure yet. So we'll have to see if that comes to fruition or not. But anyway, that's all video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, feel free to drop a like. So if you new, turn on notice. All good stuff. And like always, try this one to 5,000 likes. If you made it to the end of the video, put Tonic in the comments to show your support that you made all the way through. But anyway, that's all for this one. Stay tuned for the others. Obviously, we have the meta bigs and stuff like that that I was just talking about. The seven ones. Those will be coming out. We got my 611 pure inside with a little bit of a pop on it, even if you wanted to, like 65 three-pointer. So if you're interested in the big man videos, we got a ton of them. We got like a Shaq build, a Joel Embiid build, stuff like that. I couldn't make AD. That was just way too hard, in my opinion. But anyway, we got most of them. Also, in case you guys didn't know, I'm pairing with NBA 2K Lads again this year. So 
in this time around, since it's so early, they're going to have early content such as the ratings you need for each badge and all the requirements with that that are listed in, you know, visual form. We also have each takeover ratings boost, all the ratings that are boosted by every takeover. And a lot of this info, it's stuff I'm interested in seeing. Like that, for instance, is something I didn't spend my time on the game looking for. So you'll find it on their website, as well as the fact that I am super interested in that myself. So I'll be checking it out. And then also, as soon as the game drops, they're going to look for every animation requirement and list that on their website as well. All right. So as for the premium content, this is where the banger is. Now, obviously, this is 2K24 information right here. If, to get the 25, you're going to have to subscribe. But 2K Labs is cool enough to let me show you the 24 info as an example. So, for instance, you got a lot of different ways to sort it through here. You can look through green window, speed. You can look for the fastest millisecond jump shot. You can look for the total make percent. So, for instance, on the early, middle, and late end of the green window, what the chances are, then all that combined into the total average. You can look through the most makeable shots to the fastest ones with the biggest green window to the ones that fit your position group between the guards, wings, and bigs. It's fire. You can find the bases and the uppers in here and combine that for the best possible statistical jump shot. And it's just a huge tool. So shout out to them for that. And then you have ranking of dribble moves per category. So it's going to be like behind the backs ranks against each other, showing you which ones are the best. There's like a letter grade on each of them tested by Koza. So he's going to be ranking all those dribble moves in each category. And then we also have dribble practice tools. So it's going to be showing you exactly how to do the moves on the controller and then you can replicate it on the controller in their website as well so for anyone interested in supporting me while also getting access to the content you can go ahead and subscribe to the 2k labs premium right here on nba2klab.com and then when you click register it'll allow you a chance to put in a creator code of someone you want to support and then if you put in code Laker at checkout, you'll get 20% off of your whole purchase right there. And not that some of you guys care, but just to let you know, I get a percentage based off only your initial purchase. So if you got the monthly, I would only get a percentage based on your first month. So if you do want to support me a little bit and plan to get like three to six or even a year long subscription, feel free to get those. And I would really appreciate it. But I get that not everybody wants to. So if you want just the monthly as well, that's cool too. So anyway, that's code Laker at checkout. Appreciate you guys for watching. None of that, let's get back to the video. So. That's all video. Hope you enjoyed. None of that. Take it easy, man. Peace.